Hello world and welcome back to another episode from Beyond the Matrix. My name is Sarah and today I'm back finally to talk about transits but I'm going to be doing it a little bit differently. So before I was trying to highlight the big transit of the day um I think that gets a little muddled because well my audience isn't necessarily astrologers <laughs> so I'm trying to make astrology more accessible for people that don't follow astrology or do their own astrology so what I'd like to do is highlight the planet of the day and take us through the entire week of what that planet will be doing and so when I say the planet of the day you might not know that the five traditional planets plus the luminaries each have a day of the week and so that's everything from Mercury to Saturn because the ancients of course hadn't discovered Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto as far as we know so I'm going to read an excerpt from Demetra George's book on ancient astrology in theory and practice. And so from the chapter on planets, it's chapter three, it says, each planet had authority over one of the seven days of the week, as well as over the hours of each day. The sun had authority over Sunday the moon over moon Monday, Mars over Tuesday, Mercury over Wednesday, Jupiter over Thursday, Venus over Friday, and Saturn over Saturday. So they actually even had a ruler of each hour, but I'm not going to go into that. I just want to talk um, briefly about the naming of the days of the week and so I messed up and said moon day <laughs> which you can do for a lot of the days actually moon day and then there's um, Tuesday which is uh, Mars's day and that's maladie or French for Tuesday uh, Wednesday which in French is mercredi and so that's Mercury's day then Thursday Jeudi, that's Jupiter's day also, some people will say Thor's Day because it's Thursday. And then Friday, uh, Vendredi, which is Venus's Day. And Saturday, Saturn's Day. And then there's Sunday, which is the Sun's Day. And so that's the days of the week. That's how they were named. So I think it's appropriate to highlight each planet on its day of the week. And especially because we just had the Lunar New Year and that was when the moon conjoined the sun at one degree of Aquarius. And it's the year of the water rabbit. Now, before I discuss what it means for the moon to be moving through different signs and into different aspects with different planets, I'm going to describe what the moon is kind of about and the significations of the moon as they were assigned by various astrologers of ancient times. And I'm going to be reading from Chris Brennan's Hellenistic Astrology for this part of the video. And so it reads, the moon, Selene. The moon is born from the reflection of the solar light and possessing a counterfeit light signifies in a nativity man's physical life, the body, the mother, conception, form, appearance, the goddess, living together or lawful marriage, a nurse, an older sibling, housekeeping, the queen, mistress of the house, possessions, fortune, city, gathering of the masses, Gains, expenditures, home, boats, travel, wandering, since it does not hold straight due to the crab. Of the parts of the body, she rules the left eye, the stomach, breasts, the breath, the spleen, 
membranes, and marrow, from which it produces dropsy. Of substances, she rules silver and glass. She is of the nocturnal sect, light green in color and salty in taste. So that's a description of the significations of the moon. And so also the moon changes a lot. We're going to see that this will probably be the longest video of every week because the moon moves so quickly compared to the rest of the planets. She uses our relationship with our mother and our emotions and the environment within which the story takes place. And because the moon moves so quickly, there's a lot of phases. And so, in fact, we just left a phase of the moon, um, one of the very significant phases of the moon, which is the new moon. And that's when the moon moves into a conjunction with the sun. And that happened at one degree of Aquarius for the lunar new year that we just celebrated. So when the moon is in Aquarius, we might feel more aloof and perhaps we want to isolate ourselves. We may be very interested in intellectual matters um, because Aquarius is an air sign. And so air signs are associated with the mind and thoughts and when it comes to Aquarius it's in this realm of either something very rebellious or something that's for the purpose of serving the collective in a humanitarian sort of way so all of those themes were kind of coming up around this new moon and now we're going to move into some of the aspects that the moon has made since the new moon which new moons are new beginnings seeds being planted and with an aquarius new moon it's very forward thinking it's very innovative the moon did move through other aspects um, that i'm not going to mention because there's a lot of aspects in the next week um, so we're just going to move ahead move forward from today and what i have is like I said, the moon moves so quickly that she actually experiences all four of the elements within a week. She's going to go through an air sign, a water sign, a fire sign, and an earth sign, which is pretty cool. And I think that's going to happen every week, but we're going to have to see. Uh, it just so happens that that's the way the zodiacal wheel falls, and that's how quickly the moon moves. So from today, it is the 23rd of January, and... It's Monday, the moon's day, and the moon has just recently moved through a conjunction with both Saturn and Venus, first Saturn and then Venus. Because the moon is the sign that's associated with our emotions, and she has been in Saturn's house, while Saturn is there, it's kind of keeping her disciplined or not necessarily so expressive she might even feel defensive here and so when i say she describing the moon think about your emotions we're kind of making the archetypal image in our head of the moon and so i'm going to be talking about the moon but keep in mind that this is the emotions the relationship with your mother and the environment within which things are taking place so it kind of describes the energy and so now i'm trying to define for us what does energy mean what does it mean when we're talking about energy and in astrology it's describing the medium within which we are in so i'm going to be reading a lot from ren butler's the archetypal universe to describe what the moon with a particular planet is like this is where the moon is now and again we're talking about the moon being in a conjunction with saturn because that's where she was earlier today even though it is very early today for me. I'm just going to read from Rem Butler's The Archetypal Universe to kind of get this going quicker and so that I'm not spending a lot of time trying to describe the aspects. I think in other videos for other days and for other planets, since they move a lot more slowly, I'll be able to give my personal experiences, my personal interpretations. But for the sake of time today and because I'm not used to doing the videos this way, I'm just going to be reading. So moon and Saturn together. Rim Butler says, 
emotional maturity and self-control, deeply felt responsibility and integrity, conscientiousness and care, emotional satisfaction through hard work, a gift for focused and sustained introspection. In the shadow, a tendency for cold efficiency and overwork to replace warm human contact, habitual protection and defensiveness, feelings of isolation and loneliness, self-judgment and repression of one's basic human needs. So the moon, not necessarily as comfortable in Saturn as, you know, in Cancer and her home sign. But not necessarily in her detriment. It's just kind of like, put your head down, get work done. Don't worry about emotions. And then we have the moon now is in a conjunction with Venus. Or has just moved through the conjunction with Venus. And when planets are this close together, they're actually, it's all, you know, kind of in the same part of the sky. So this would be called something like a triple conjunction. That's something it can be referred to as, but triple conjunction to describe Saturn and Venus and the moon being together. So now listen to how conflicting it is that Venus and Saturn are together and then the moon's kind of moving through these phases of the day. So, so of course, we get kind of that cold, isolated conjunction with Saturn and then combine that with the significations of the moon with Venus. So the moon with Venus says... Emotional grace and harmony, yin, gentleness and sensitivity, a love of soothing and cuddling, enjoyment and bonding at home, youthful charm, and in the shadow, an overly yin or passive nature, a tendency toward emotional temptations and indulgence, smothering or possessive love, cravings for sugar. So you can see especially in that shadow, how Saturn is going to be like, you can't eat that sugar or you can't express those emotions. You can't overindulge. You might be wondering, like, how do these all go together? So Ren Butler does this nice thing where he he describes kind of these triple conjunctions too and their significations. So Saturn and Venus with the moon. I'm going to read a couple of excerpts from the endings of the chapter. So Moon, Venus, Saturn, emotional maturity and integrity, a quiet and modest charm, contended enjoyment of life's simple pleasures, quality relationships and quality time, a tough exterior yet soft interior. And then in the shadow, deeply registered parental punishment, abuse or neglect, chronic fears of rejection and abandonment, alternating with lonely yearnings to connect defended emotional boundaries so i want to move on because oh my gosh there's so many aspects that the moon makes that what i'm going to do is kind of chunk them okay and so the next big aspect that's going to take place that's going to actually be tomorrow so we're in the air today and then the moon is going to move into the next sign, the water sign of Pisces, later today, midday for Central Standard Time. So the moon is going to move into this very dreamy sign of Pisces. Again, that's a water sign. So water is also to do with our emotions, where, of course, I mentioned that air is to do with the mind and intellect and thoughts. So the moon has essentially moved into this sign where she can express herself much more. And be, you know, laughing one minute and crying the next minute and excited the next minute. And it's all over the place. So she's going to move first into a square with Mars at eight degrees. And that will take place on Tuesday. The aspect is going to be a square with Mars. Mars is in Gemini, still at eight degrees. Because Mars stationed to move direct from a very long retrograde period. Now, squares are conflicting. So the moon is in this water sign of Pisces. Again, that's emotions, where Mars is in this air sign of Gemini. And that's, again, air sign. So it's intellect, thinking, the mind, cerebral. And the moon being in a square with Mars, it's a bit of a conflict, you could say. 
or at least conflicting energies. They're not necessarily working towards the same goal in the same way. Now, reading again from Rem Butler's Archetypal Universe, it says that the moon and Mars represents inner strength and determination, vitality and passion, and engaging and stimulating emotional life, ardent impulses to bond and connect energy and activity in one's home with the shadow of a tendency towards sharp reactions and outbursts, fierce and brash attitudes, family conflicts, and anger. So these are things to be aware of for Tuesday. And that's because Mars is the planet that's associated with moving quickly into battle. And, and of course, the moon's in this hyper-emotional Pisces sign. So something to be mindful of, but then the moon is going to move into a harmonious aspect with both Mercury and Uranus. And I'm going to chunk those two together for the sake of time. And because they're both kind of, uh, people will say that Uranus is the higher frequency of Mercury. And so in some sense, they're both to do with messages, getting some sort of insight so it's going to be about three hours later at 10 degrees. So about three hours later from that square to Mars, the moon is going to move into a sextile with Mercury. Mercury is in the Earth sign of Capricorn. This means getting things done, you know, putting things in order to get down to business. Mercury has been going back over a lot of information during retrograde and is now moving direct. So there's a lot of ambition here, a lot of building. And sextiles are a harmonious aspect. There's an opportunity here. So it's almost, and Mercury is this planet that's associated with communication, subject-object relationship, and even short-distance travel, or things to do with the mind. So it's almost as if that conflict leads to some sort of resolution here. And then there's also a sextile to Uranus. Again, there's an opportunity here. So it's kind of like working through the information and then receiving an insight. At 14 degrees of Pisces, the moon will move into that aspect with Uranus. So I'm just going to read what Ren Butler has written about the moon with Mercury and Uranus. So it says, impulses toward mental and emotional independence, unusual gifts of human intuition and insight, and enjoyment of games, puzzles, and novelty in one's home, stimulating daily routines. In the shadow, a potential for manic restlessness, nervous emotional tensions, mental and emotional impulsiveness, random quirky utterings while having occasional comic moments. So maybe a little bit of comic relief after something tumultuous with that square to Mars. It seems like Mercury and Uranus might lighten the mood, but it might be something very shocking because it is Uranus. And so it's something that comes in very quickly. But to me, this kind of screams insight, epiphany, something coming in, a revelation. By Wednesday, we have the moon moving into a conjunction with Neptune. So this is a very dreamy aspect because the sign of Pisces is already very dreamy and watery and Neptune's at home here. And so the moon conjoining Neptune in this very emotional and spiritual sign of Pisces in fact, a lot of people associate Pisces with Christianity because it's the fish. So Ren Butler writes that the moon with Uranus may arise as feelings of vitality and inspiration, vivacity and aliveness, emotional liberation and awakening, a fun and stimulating home life, a rebirth of family and relationship connections with the shadow of tendencies towards emotional restlessness and impatience, sudden reactions and impulsiveness, frequent urges to move and manic mood swings. 
So Neptune, in addition to being very dreamy, can also be a little bit hazy and mystical and whimsical. And there's a veil here that we can't see through. Also associated with the god Poseidon, Neptune, god of the ocean and storms. And this can be inspiring or may feel restless if we can't see through that fog of Neptune. After that, a few hours later, we have the moon moving into a sextile. Again, there's an opportunity here with Pluto. Pluto is the god of the underworld. This is death and rebirth. And Pluto has been in the sign of Capricorn since about 2008. The sign of Capricorn, again, is building an ambition. And if you think about some of the structures of our system, particularly the financial system and the housing market, Pluto has kind of been wreaking havoc in that area. And so that just kind of gives you a general idea of what Pluto is representing in this particular Earth sign. We have the moon moving into an opportunity, a sextile with Pluto just before leaving the sign of Pisces. So it says here in the archetypal universe that moon with Pluto might arise as emotional intensity, deep and passionate feelings, powerful catharsis of repressed energies and emotions, renewal and regeneration of one's home life, kindness during times of crisis. And in the shadow, it can be extreme emotional reactions, dark and obsessive feelings, a tendency to brood and smolder, challenging outbursts in one's home and family life. So there's an opportunity within that energy of the moon in this aspect with Pluto. After which, the moon is going to ingress or move into the sign of Aries. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It's associated with spring and the warrior because it's ruled by Mars. It's very quick with its movements. Yeah, so those are all kind of ways to describe Aries. And Aries is also a fire sign and a cardinal sign. And so it's initiating, it's beginning things in this very fiery, passionate way. So we've moved now through the air sign of Aquarius, the water sign of Pisces, and now we're into fire. This is things getting ignited. The first thing that the moon runs into is this planet Jupiter, this planet that's associated with expansion and growth. How do we expand in this world? And Jupiter is a planet that's associated with good luck. I call Jupiter the big daddy of the sky. It's just going to give you whatever you want. And as far as ancient astrology, it's referred to as the greater benefic. So it's going to take place at four degrees of Aries. It says, A rich and abundant emotional life, feelings of happiness, well-being, and contentment, natural kindness and generosity, life-supporting human values. But in the shadow, feelings of entitlement and excessive needs, the pursuit of material consumption or prestige as a substitute for love, cravings for rich and fatty foods, emotional dramatics in everyday life making it bigger <laughs> whatever it is whether it's good or bad overindulgence is something that's definitely associated with jupiter now we've actually got a sextile here to the sun you know within that three degree orb that we consider this a true sextile and so again there's sextile so there's the opportunity well what sun in aquarius the moon jupiter with the sun is a positive and expansive nature an outpouring vitality and enthusiasm Grand dramatic flair, feelings of abundance and satisfaction, the joy of living. But in the shadow, tendencies towards arrogance or self-righteousness, attitudes of entitlement in many areas of life, habitual excesses. So that's going to be the moon, Jupiter, and the sun, which is all taking place within a couple of hours of one another, these aspects. So we're going to move on to Thursday. Thursday, the moon is going to move into a sextile with the ruler of the house within which she finds herself. And so with moon sextile to Mars, there's an opportunity within this maybe inner strength and determination or within a potential outburst 
there might be something that comes from that because sometimes expressing our emotions and overreacting leads to an opportunity to either redeem ourselves, express what we've been feeling for a very long time. So there's still good that can come from maybe not having complete control of our emotions all the time. And that's going to take place at nine degrees. Then a few hours later, the moon moves into a square with Mercury at 11 degrees. So this sounds like, again, expressing yourself verbally because Mercury is in Capricorn. It's in the sign that wants to build. We're building bridges here, initiating that uh, process of connecting ideas. There could be a bit of a conflict because it is a square. So not necessarily working towards the same, the not necessarily working towards either the same goal or the same goal in the same way, maybe differing ideas about how to go about doing this because Mercury is in a Saturn ruled sign there in Capricorn. And so there might be this approach that is all about efficiency and getting things done where the moon in Aries is quick to take action. It doesn't really want to think about the process. And so it might move a little too quickly. And then see, because here's the thing, then the moon is going to move into this aspect with this asteroid, which is called Chiron. Chiron is our wounded healer. And that means that there's something being exposed here, a deep wound, maybe an emotional wound. And it may be a result of either this conflict with Mercury in Capricorn or this opportunity of Mars in Gemini. So it almost seems inevitable that something's going to blow up, but then there's going to be something constructive that comes out of that, whether it's the exposure of this wound, this deep wound, or a constructive way that we can communicate our feelings about this deep wound. So this wound of Chiron has a lot to do with our individuality because it's in the sign of Aries and our ability to do things on our own and achieve on our own. So basically what I'm seeing here is Mercury really wants to build with the moon in Aries, but the moon in Aries has its own way that it wants to go about doing things and is supported really with that Mars in Gemini to to think quickly through it where Mercury is like, slow down, let's do this in a in a business sort of way, in a disciplined sort of way. After that conjunction with Chiron, we have the moon moving into a sextile with Saturn. The moon is going to hit that sextile with Saturn at 25 degrees of Aries. And with Saturn being that planet of discipline and hard work and seeing projects through, that's something that Aries isn't necessarily known for. Aries is good at starting things, but not necessarily good at finishing things. So there's an opportunity here in disciplining ourselves and putting in the intellectual hard work. And then there's a breakthrough coming, which is again, Pluto, but this is a square to Pluto. So again, this is kind of a difficult aspect in that it is a square. In squares, we're kind of working towards different goals or working towards the same goal using different methods. And this will take place a few hours later on Friday at 28 degrees of Aries. So this this could be dark emotions coming back up or shadows. There's this theme of death and rebirth. So starting fresh, of course, with the moon being in a fire sign and Pluto being about the phoenix rising up from the ashes. This is kind of that, yeah, could be that crash and burn moment. Because what's interesting is right after this square with Pluto, the moon's going to move right into her exaltation to her favorite sign to be in, which is the earth sign of Taurus. And that's going to take place on Friday it's beautiful because she's moving into Taurus, her exaltation, in a sextile with Venus, the ruler of that sign, Taurus. And that's a harmonious aspect. There's an opportunity there. And that sextile is going to take place at one degree of Taurus. 
So the moon being exalted in Taurus, we can associate Taurus with, of course, the bull, which is what the sign's archetype is, but also the cow and milk and, and, and nourishment in that sort of way. So the moon's taken care of here. In fact, she can indulge here. And also because this is an earth sign and it provides some stability, some steadiness, some reliability. And Venus is also exalted. Venus in Pisces is in the sign of her exaltation. So something very beautiful happening here or there's an opportunity for something very beautiful to happen here in terms of our creativity, uh, love, whatever it is that we're putting that Venusian energy into. It's a very beautiful aspect, probably the best the entire week. And it's going to be dependent on where this falls in your chart, where that energy will arise. But just Friday looks like a really beautiful day for the moon and and the container within which everything is happening. So the medium, the environment of the story, the setting of the story, it's like really nice, really nice, really exalted. <laughs> this is also happening on Venus's day, which makes it even more exciting. And this first degree, first degree is like new beginnings, things new happening the moon is going to move into a conjunction with the node. And the node I've mentioned before, the nodes the nodes of the moon, these are the eclipse points. These are where the eclipses happen, where the moon disappears or where the sun disappears. But in this particular case, we can also think of the north node as a curse that looks like a blessing. So something that we're very drawn to, this kind of this thing that we really, really want. And there's a tendency here for the moon to maybe be overindulgent in the sign of Taurus. So it's something to be aware of is that we're going to be so high on the exaltation of the moon, sextile to Venus on Venus's day. And so it might, you know, we might get carried away. So it's really going to be important to stay grounded as we do in the sign of Taurus since it is an earth sign, but exciting. So the moon is going to conjoin the North Node on Saturday at eight degrees of Taurus. And it's important to mention that this is going to be in a square to the sun in Aquarius. So this all happens at nearly the exact same time, maybe a couple of hours difference. But that square to the sun, so we've got, that's, I mean, that's that discipline. That's like keeping in mind, you know, the Aquarian... We're doing this for the sake of humanity, whatever it is that you're aspiring, to aspiring towards, because sometimes we can get so set on a goal that it becomes us. It becomes our ego, it becomes more about us than it ever was about what we originally signed up to do the thing for. So it's important that, you know, we're getting all of that good energy from the exalted moon, the exalted Venus being in sextile to one another on Venus's day. It's important to not let whatever comes to you, let it get to your head. It's important to keep your head down and stay disciplined and just important to keep in mind uh, the ideals of the Aquarius sun here. Later that day, we have a trine with Mercury that's still in Capricorn. And so maybe something constructive, maybe some constructive communication here trines are things falling into place it almost seems natural like you don't really have to do anything here it's just going to feel very natural and that's going to take place at 13 degrees of taurus which again is going to be very close to uranus so insights again revelations again something coming in a big shocking uh, message coming in and that working very well with that builder mentality of mercury in capricorn and then finally on sunday at 23 degrees of taurus there's going to be a sextile to neptune in pisces very dreamy you can see here the next aspects are going to be a square to saturn and a trine to pluto and so 
that square to Saturn, there might be some sort of conflict between the ideals of Saturn and Aquarius, Saturn at home and Aquarius, discipline, hard work, square to overindulgent moon and Taurus, makes sense. And then that trine to Pluto, again, there's something that just falls into place here. And with Pluto, it's going to be death and rebirth, transformation, transcendence. Again, it's a trine, so things might just fall into place. There might be an ending, a new beginning that's just kind of natural. Or there may be some sort of transformation that's just falling into place that's just effortless. So, like I said, the moon is moving the quickest. This is going to be probably the longest video every week. I really hope that I can stay disciplined about putting these videos out so that we can cover every planet for every day of the week. So I hope that you've enjoyed this look at the moon through the signs of Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, and Taurus. And I'll be back to talk about the moon again next week, but I'll be back again tomorrow to talk about Mars. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Yeah.